Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, we're going to go through how to set up a ClickPop page. But before we do that, I'm going to fix something on my screen, which often happens to people when they're inside of ClickFunnels. It stopped doing it now that I started recording, but the screen was just wobbling back and forth. And the reason why it does that is because the slider on the left side keeps turning on and off. So you have to either enlarge or make smaller the, the window so with the, uh, the slider on the left side quits moving back and forth but um, so back to what we're doing here with click pops I use these a lot of time for my legal stuff at the bottom of the page the terms of service the privacy policy that kind of stuff I don't want people leaving the page when they click on it so they click on it the privacy policy opens up right over the top of the page and then they can click out of it and they never leave the page just like when you click on this here this is basically a click pop it comes up over over the top of the page when we exit out it goes away and you never leave the page another nice thing you can do with these click pops is some people ask whether you can have a secondary pop up on the page so like if somebody wants to do an exit intent or something like that is there a way to have a secondary pop up and there is because you can set this to trigger on your mouse exit so there is uh, more than one ways to have a pop-up on your page. So here we have a couple different ways we can set this up initially, and then we're going to look at three or four ways of how to set it up on your site. So the first thing you see, we have our link text. So let's just change our link text, and it will change what goes on right in here in the middle of the code. And we're just going to type in, this is a test not a text and you see it flashed yellow and it changed the middle of the code right there so what we want to do we're not going to have it um, exit on um, on mouse exit or we're not going to have a trigger on mouse exit we're not going to set a delay we're just going to copy this out of here and then let me open up a text file and well, let's just paste that into the text file and then you can do the same thing with an image you can upload an image just like you would into the image editor or we can click on choose an image and let's just grab this image right here again we can set what we want and we can um, then what we're all we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab this code and we're gonna drop this in over here again and that's it. We're going to come up and X out of this. And now I have a page already set up uh, to put our click pop into. So we'll open that. And when I was testing this, I had been using the order form page. So let's just change this here to our squeeze page. And then let's take out this element and we will then put it right back in in a minute because there's a couple different ways we can set this up one of the ways you can set it up and may make it easier may not to get this all set up properly is we want to use the text block and we're going to open that up and we're going to grab our code out we're going to come in here where you got the two arrows and we're going to take everything out of here and we're going to paste in our code and what you're going to find once the code renders itself after you click on update it takes out these script tags somehow or another it still works without that script in there i'm not really quite sure how it does it but let's just click on update save it and then let's preview the page just to see what it's going to look like Okay, here we got our text. So this says this is a test. We click on that and up pops our squeeze page. We could X out of that. And if we click on the image, same thing, the squeeze page pops up over the top. So that works out really nice. Now, the reason why I said this might be a little easier for some people to use is if you don't know CSS, you don't know how to really work with that, um, the code in here, you can see that the text was really small and there's issues with it. So let's do this. Let's click on the on the HTML box up here at the top and turn that off and then let's take a hold of our test this is a test let's just highlight the whole thing and let's say we want that bold we want it italics and we want to change the font size now what I found is that a lot of the stuff up here doesn't work if you try to change the text color or the text background or a lot of other things it doesn't seem to work very well but if you want to center it you can center it so this element is kind of glitchy but it it's kind of a way you can get started with your CSS on that 
on that item if you want. You can then come in here and where it says style equals font size 25, you can make do some more CSS. You can just say color. Uh, we can just say black and you know something like that and then we will click on update and it changed the color to black. So a second way that you can put in this content is through a custom CSS HTML or custom JavaScript HTML box. I always say that wrong. So we will just open that up, open the editor, and we will paste in the code. Again, click out, we will save. Now it's not gonna show us anything like this one here, and which is another nice thing about using the text box is that it does show you the preview, but we'll go into the page and we will reload the page and see what it looks like. Again, we'll test it. This is a test, opens up the squeeze page. Close that out, we'll click on the image. Open up the squeeze page, which we will close out. So those are now two different ways to put in this element. The third way to do it is really my favorite way, and we can do it a number of different ways. So let's, let's, uh, let's just create a new section here down at the bottom, and we'll just drag it down. Actually, let's drag it up to the top. Let's put it up at the top. Create a new row. Now let's create a couple of new elements. One of them I want to put in is going to be the navigation element. I also want to put in a text element and an image element. And let's just grab an image to put in here. Let's just use this. Okay, so what we're going to look at next is let's look at our code. And the code really is the same for both of them because it's going to open up the squeeze page. So if you see here, both of them have this exact same code at the end. So we can grab a hold of this code. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to come back into our navigation menu. Open that up. And let's say for features, we want to open up the squeeze page. We'll leave it on the same window, of course. Now let's come into this text. We'll highlight all the text. We'll click on the hyperlink. We'll take out the pound sign, and we will copy that in, and we'll leave the text color blue. That's fine. And then the same thing with our image. We're going to open up our image, scroll down to our link URL, and we are going to paste in that code as well. Now the third thing we need to do, and let's actually, let's come down here and let's take out all of this at the bottom because it could cause us an issue. And the issue could be that it would have picked up the code. There's a second bit of code that you have to put in here and I'll show you a couple of different ways right now how to put in that code. Right here on the page, we could put in our custom JavaScript HTML box, and we could come over and we could grab this script right at the bottom. It's going to be exactly the same script for, for both ways of doing it. And in fact, it's the exact same script for every single page, every single funnel inside of your ClickFunnels account. So we can put that in. Just drop this in here into the custom JavaScript HTML box, and we can hit save. Now when we reload this page and we click on features, it should open up our squeeze page. So we'll close that out. Same thing with that text we turned into a hyperlink. And the same thing with the image that we turned into a hyperlink. So those three all worked perfectly. Now instead of putting the code into this box here, let's click this out click on OK, and we can come over to our tracking code after you click on settings, then tracking code, go into your footer tracking code or your header tracking code, it doesn't really matter, and we will paste that in, and we will click on save, and once again, we will preview the page, and we'll click on the image, and it should open up the squeeze page. So there you go, there's a second way of putting in that code. And now the third and my favorite way of doing it is let's go back in here and let's strip it out. Close that box and hit save. And we're going to go to settings. And we're going to scroll down to our head, head tracking code or our body tracking code. In this case, let's just use the body tracking code. And we will paste it in there. 
And then what this is going to do is this is going to put that click pop code, the script for it, on every single page in your funnel. So this way you just put it in one time. You can create the click pops on every single page in your funnel. And then all you have to do is just have it in one place. You don't have to think about it every time. All you have to do is just come in and copy out this code, which tells you to go to the squeeze page when it's clicked on. So let's go down to the bottom and save and update the settings. And while that's updating, let's go back into our opt-in page and let's click on preview. And let's click on features and up pops our squeeze page. So there you go. That's about half a dozen different ways that you can use a click pop to be able to basically keep somebody on your page.